uh, when it comes to the 33 agenda for sustainable development and the management of the SDG hubs program. And uh, we just recently, a few months ago, we celebrated our very first um, one year anniversary of this program. And uh, as you, we are very, we, are, we really appreciate the fact that you are all so engaged and uh, we are very pleased with the, all the initiatives and activities that you have conducted so far. And we are, we are very glad to have you on board. Um, so I'm going to present the rest of the team. Uh, to start with uh, Ramu Damodaran, who is the chief of the office. Um, we also have Lanise Collins, uh, Bo Lee, Brenda Wawa, and our colleagues also Talita Melo and Dari Dambaeva. So we are all uh, here for this meeting. And without further delay, I'm going to hand it over to the chief of the UN Academic Impact, Ramu Damodaran. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Omar, and thank you all of you for joining. I, I think we realize that this is unconscionably late for many of you, especially in, in Asia and the Pacific, and we are very grateful that you joined us. Uh, we began thinking of the series a couple of months ago before the current pandemic and crisis, and we were thinking of it really at that point for three critical elements. The first being for how all the hubs can, in a sense, know what the others are doing, and work together to give life to the concept that all the sustainable development goals are actually related to one another and are not watertight compartments. And while all of you have been sharing your activity reports, which we've tried to reflect in our newsletter and the website, we did feel that there is really no substitute for a regular conversation. And it is our hope that when you get together in this forum, you will then have ideas that you can pursue bilaterally or in smaller groups with each other to, to get that momentum going. The second was the context of this being the 75th anniversary year of the United Nations. We wanted to explore with you ideas of how the academic impact and its members and its student community could be engaged in that. And we have some ideas on that, which Lenise will share with you in the course of our conversation this morning. And then the third which suddenly became compellingly and chillingly relevant was how, in addition to looking at sustainable development in the longer term, we as an academic community with intellectual social responsibility can talk about crises of the moment, which are sometimes regarded as political or strategic or, in the present case, medical and health related. And that really brings me to two aspects of our current conversation. One, and we don't need to cover this in the next one hour, but it's something I would be grateful if you thought about, how we can support and respond to the COVID-9 virus, both medically in terms of research and in terms of community engagement. And the second is how we as an academic community can support multilateral calls, including by the United Nations, by the Secretary General, for a global ceasefire at a time like this, so that energy and resources, which should not at the best of times be frittered in conflict and war, are not at this critical time diverted to that. So that essentially was the framework of why we've started this. And um, all of us look forward to your feedback later on how useful you felt this is, how we would like this to continue, and in particular, the format and the time that suits you most. As I mentioned, we have two specific items we want to share with you. One is the UN 75 item, which uh, Lenise will talk about. And then Omar will share with you the results of a survey we conducted. And then we'll really throw it open to you. We thought, since we have shared the list of participants, that we will not go around naming everyone. But if you do wish to take the mic, please indicate that and please introduce yourself. Back to you, Omar. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh... Ramu, um, so um, we are uh, we're going to, to talk a little bit about very, and very quickly about the, the survey that uh, we launched in December and uh, was finalized by mid-February. And we got some uh, interesting results and I, we thank you very much indeed because all 
all of the SDG hubs indeed uh, responded in time to this survey, and this of course allow us to um, to know a little to know a little bit more about you and what you're doing and planning to do. And um, I'm going to share very quickly the the results of this survey. Um, 15 out of the of the 17 SDG hubs are currently designed and implementing initiatives, and we were we were very pleased to know the wide range of uh, activities that are being conducted or are going to be conducted between this year and the next one, including awareness campaigns, seminars, community and research projects, engagement with the with the UN, not only us but other UN components, lecture, new courses, curriculum changes, partnerships, workshops and even sustainable ideas on campus with the assistance or the participation of youth. We also found that 15 out of the six, uh, 17 SDGs um, will host or organize events, including conferences, workshops, commemoration of international days, research-oriented activities, and side events during large UN conferences. Uh, more than half of the 17 SDG hubs are offering or will offer an educational program related to their SDGs, such as professionals and skills-based training, lectures, and master's and PhD programs. And also, more than half of the SDG hubs mention student campaigns, events, and initiatives to be highlighted, as well as call for papers for either conferences or journals. Nine of the 17 SDG hubs refer to a specific cases of SDG related projects, either ongoing or already completed, which have already been regularly reported to UNAI. Um, that said, only five of the 17 SDGs said that they were willing to share articles or publications. Now, in terms of the level of involvement of two different constituencies, campus at large and general communities, um, out of 10, which was the, the maximum uh, rate, the average rate for the campus of large involvement was 6.43, and in the case of the general community was 6.68. Now, SDG hubs also reported that the 2030 agenda, and all SDG hubs actually agree on this, is or has been embedded, adapted, or somehow transformed into a strategic or sustainable initiative plans policies and strategies. And actually some schools mentioned that in the mission statements or ongoing activities, they refer or relate to the SDGs in a way or another directly or indirectly. And finally, um, 15 out of the 16, I'm sorry, 17 SDG hubs responded affirmatively to the question of connecting each other. And we have had this conversation with some of the hubs already. And some of you have already inquired about the possibility of this direct interconnection or interaction between you. And two thirds of the responders said that they have had contact with the UN already, with the UN country team, with the UN information center near to you, or with another UN entity at the local, national, or even regional level. So this is, this is very important for us, but also some hubs said that they were willing to have even more interaction and more engagement with the UN at these various levels, with the support of UNAI. Now, as you can see from the results, SDG hubs are already very engaged with the sustainable development agenda and with the, your particular SDG. And some of you expressed the need of certain support from UNAI, either to publicize what you're doing, either to uh, connect you with other UN components. And all the needs uh, that have been compiled through this survey um, allow us to create a toolkit for SDG hubs that is already in the uh, draft process and you are going to receive it very shortly. And uh, this toolkit will allow you to improve the excellent work that you are already uh, conducting um, in the field, uh, on campus and beyond. So this, is, this was very important for us to let you know that we analyzed the survey, we analyzed the results and we are going to see um, uh, the best way to, to go forward based on the responses that you provided uh, through this survey. Now, it, it is very, it's very important for us also to talk about UN75 and um, how universities and colleges can connect with that, um, and also to speak about the UNAI 10th anniversary and also the decade of action for the SDGs. Um, I'm going to just briefly talk about UN75 to hand it over to, to my colleague, Lanise. Um, 
but you already received a package of information. Uh, basically, uh, we are willing that, uh, despite the ongoing challenges, uh, of course, the UN is is having its 75th anniversary this year, and uh, we are we are willing to have SDG hubs in particular because you are the exemplars in each one of your fields to host an online dialogue um, on campus or and beyond. Um, to discuss about relevant topics related to the SDGs or to the role of the UN in particular in these challenging times. And with that, I give the word to my colleague, Lanise. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We realize the time difference uh, for many of you, uh, so we really appreciate uh, your willingness to, uh, to to join us in what may be very early or very late in your time zone. Uh, as Omar said, I'm Lanise Collins, and uh, I work with Ramu and the team uh, to uh, help roll out and implement um, many of the activities that we do for academic impact. Uh, and one of those things that we're looking at uh, is the celebration of UN 75. As you know, this is the 75th anniversary of the organization's founding. And as part of those commemorations, the organization uh, wanted to seek out input and guidance and feedback in uh, what would be one of the largest global dialogues ever held. And of course, universities and college campuses and the academic community will play an incredibly important role in that. Uh, we understand that with so many schools now being out of session, uh, probably for the remainder of the year, that this engagement may take on a different look. Uh, but essentially, the UN 75 dialogues are a way to get feedback, to get input uh, from people around the world on what people feel are the most pressing issues and how the UN can play a role in uh, addressing those issues and how uh, we can include academia and civil society. So these dialogues can be very, um, very informal. Uh, when school was in, we had envisioned that uh, people would gather. It could be led by student leaders. It could be led by professors uh, or campus administrators. And really, it's just a discussion about what are the most important and pressing issues and what do we think are some of the solutions that we can bring to bear. And as Omar said, uh, they've shared, he's shared with you a packet of information, including sort of a checklist and a form that you can use to guide your discussions. And we're hoping that even with the disruption to the academic year, that schools will be able to hold these uh, dialogues virtually. Uh, and so we can share more information with you. We are also working with the UN 75 team to host a on how to host these dialogues. And so we'll be uh, in touch with you with more information on that. But we would love it if your campus could uh, participate. And it can be a very short, you know, hour long, 90 minute sort of discussion with as many people as you can gather virtually. Uh, and there's a very short survey and form to fill out to report your results. Uh, so we would love your participation on that. Uh, Academic Impact is also celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Uh, so we would love to have schools participate in that by committing to do uh, at least one thing from the Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the World. Uh, so Omar has shared that guide with you and there are so many actions that are included from very small, simple things that people can do on the individual level to things that you can do on a campus level um, in terms of, for example, recycling, um, you know, getting rid of single use plastics on your campus. So these are things that we can talk about over the next few months, uh, but it will be something that we would love to celebrate for UNAI 10, which will be in November. So that's it for me and I'll turn it back over to Omar. Uh, Omar, your mic, mic, Omar. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, we are willing to know more about what you are doing, what you expect uh, for this year, even with this uh, disruption caused by the pandemic. Uh, we want to hear what are your plans, uh, what is your opinion about how has been the engagement with us so far, any ideas, solutions, proposals you might have, um, and also. 
your concerns and your expectations regarding uh, the remainder of the year. Um, have and the amount of time we have coming short. We really want to hear from you and we really want to know your thoughts about all uh, these things and especially about the anniversary of uh, the UN, UNAI. And of course, uh, as we as, as I said earlier, uh, the, the Secretary General of the UN launched earlier this year, the Decade of Action, which is going to go until 2030. And the idea is to promote the implementation of the actual agenda because there's only 10 years to achieve it. And there is an important and critical role of academia and institutions of higher education in regard to the advancement of the goals through teaching and research. So for that, uh, those of you who would like to, uh, you know, to speak, uh, please do so. Is there anyone who would like to, to start the conversation? Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi, this is uh, Saha from the American University in Dubai. We are proudly holding the SDG number 17 for partnerships. Um, I hope first and foremost that everyone is keeping very safe and healthy. And, uh, you know, I think this more than ever is going to get people closer together. It's going to make us all have uh, the same priorities. I just wanted to throw out a little concern about uh, student engagement at this stage. I think that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, adjustments that are being made for administration, professors, and students at this time. So, in terms of engaging them in uh, projects that are extracurricular projects right now, I think it would be good to be mindful and have some. Um, realistic expectations on what can come out until there's more long-term clarity on the way that they'll be studying and interacting with each other to date because uh, the UAE started taking some measures uh, later than other parts of the world not because they were late in doing so but just because uh, the numbers started showing later on in the UAE uh, that uh, students are, are currently adjusting to working from home and the focus right now is uh, is more on what their exams will be, uh, where, will, will they be online, is the university opening again. This is just to say that this will remain a priority on a student engagement level, but right now um, we haven't figured out a way to make student engagement successful online. So we haven't started the process of doing those things online. And I just wanted to bring this to your and everyone else's attention, just to say that it will be a bit of a trial and error, keeping students, um, you know, engaged and interested and and focused on extracurricular activities online is not something that I have experience in. So if anybody has any best best practices or if other universities right now are are working on this element, um, I would be really happy to connect and for us to sort of exchange some ideas just to make sure that once it lifts off, that it's sustainable. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Soha, for this. Um, would anyone else uh, of the participants Hello. would like to turn? Yes. Hello, uh, this is uh, Jonas from Christu Jayanti College, Bangalore. We have been interacting only through mail. Uh, you know, nice to see people. OK, and we are holding SDG 1, no poverty. And as uh, Madam from Dubai was sharing, uh, we have a similar concerns. The programs have, had been lined up. In fact, March 18th, I had planned one program on um, SDG one, a local discussion uh, at the state level, at the intercollegiate level. But uh, due to all this, the colleges have been closed and the local universities are, uh, you know, all functioning online. And maybe once the college reopens, we would be able to conduct some solid meetings. But in the meantime, the we have received your uh, uh, N75, the guidelines, and then we are discussing online and we hope to come out with some solid suggestions. And once we go back to the college and we would be able to take it up in a more rigorous way. So greetings from uh, Crystal Jayanti College, Bangalore. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.
Amy Malcolm from the University of Auckland. Hello, everyone. Lovely to be here with you all. Hi, Ramu. Um, the university um, is closed down. Um, we we are only operating online. Um, the whole country in New Zealand is in self isolation and uh, and uh, under very strict control. So no one can leave their house, and we expect to be here for some time. However, uh, we're finding that the online environment is. Um, is, is actually a really great way to collaborate and there is lots of experimentation going on around how people can do that. Um, two days ago, our Vice Chancellor spoke to 3,500 staff on Zoom um, and it was very successful. And I think that our students will show us the way uh, and some creative ways of how we can collaborate if we just give them a little bit of time. So um, I'm expecting that um, there will be lots of great things that we can do. We just have to find a bit of time to, to work uh, all that out. Um, the university remains really committed to, um, to leading on SDG4. There's lots of great things happening and we're really happy to share what we're doing. Um, and I think, you know, we need to see that actually because we are all in different parts of the world, that this online environment is, um, is actually a really great asset for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Uh, yes, I could um, follow up on that directly. I'm uh, Svera Dronen from the University of Bergen, and we are the SDG 14 hub, Life Below Water. Um, we have some of the same experience. We sort of transitioned quite smoothly onto online in, in most disciplines, I mean, there obviously it's different between disciplines. Some disciplines have been um, very, most of them have been very successful in going online. We're also trying to innovate and think new. And I think that would be interesting to hear from others how you are working now. Are you looking into what courses you already had that were online? Like, for instance, yesterday on our Twitter, I shared a climate change course, a MOOC that we had a couple of years ago, which has been reactivated now. Um, it's a short course, like for a month, but it's trying to sort of get on top of the situation and to offer something to the world community. I, I will share it in the in the um, in the thread here afterwards um, when I finish speaking. We're also now in dialogue with. Um, we have a course dedicated to SEG 14, um, and uh, we're in a dialogue now with the coordinator of that course to provide us with something that we could share after Easter at some point. Uh, some complications, obviously, because, well, we're all in lockdown everywhere, so we'll have to find a way of doing that. But I think definitely this would change the way we um, teach to some extent, and I think that's going to be a very interesting challenge for all the, the hubs, but, but everyone. And the question is, is there some somehow we could group all of what we're doing together with various online courses, MOOCs, et cetera, that we have, um, and somehow get that out via the United Nations. I'm just throwing that in there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Inbert. Hello. Hello. Yes, um, can I speak? Can I Yes. Speak? Yes, okay. Uh, my name is Mami Katsumi. Uh, I'm a uh, um, coordinator of Nagaoka University of Technology, Japan. Okay, now it's uh, almost 10 o'clock in the evening, so I have to go to bed now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a joke. Anyway, um, I prefer online also. And then actually, the, our university is hold the SDGs meeting once a year. So, if possible, I would like you to join our uh, conference, SDGs conference. This is organized by student. So, but currently, um, this is uh, because of the outbreak. So, we cannot, I'm not sure we can hold, but I'm thinking maybe we can do using the online. And also, and actually, last year, I sent email to some uh, hub like SDG 6 or SDG 7 or something like that but I couldn't get the reply from the hubs so um, I think I want some like a, a network uh, how to say like a, um, I want to contact easily so last time I sent from uh, using the uh, Facebook, but I couldn't. So if your site can prepare some
specific like network, like like a chat or easy to communicate, I'm very happy that. And then also another thing, I want I just want to inform you that I already got a confirmation from uh, Dr. Omar. Our university will go not our university in Japan. One of the um, book, uh, I mean, we are planning to establish one book for SDGs. And then um, I I would like to introduce. Two, two or three hub universities. So anyway, this is only Japanese, but once we publish it, uh, of course, I would like to um, share this information to you. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, we appreciate the fact that you share your your initiatives, and we are going to consider your your comments on you know more uh, direct interconnection uh, between the hubs. I will the floor. Um, can I? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, am I on? Can you guys hear yes. me? Yes. All right. So hi uh, everyone. I'm Inji from uh, uh, Cairo, Egypt. So we're uh, New Giza University, and we're uh, the SDG hub for uh, three for health and well-being. And I think with the situation that we're all living, I think this SG Hub is kind of uh, the highlight. Um, it's uh, as I share the concerns with everyone else, uh, Soha and Jonas and um, about like having uh, difficulty transitioning from being on campus, uh, working with the community, especially that we have um, in our, uh, at our hub, we uh, directly deal with patients through our students and the School of Medicine, uh, Pharmacy and Dentistry. So for us, it's been um, very challenging, not only transitioning this technical education online, but also thinking of how are we going to um, extend our um, community service uh, activities. Um, however, um, students are very inspiring. What's been going on, and I'd like to share this for, for everyone involved, is that our students have already kind of picked up uh, using the social media outlets, Instagram uh, specifically, and uh, um, uh, and sharing like online workouts together. So if I'm a, a club, a health you know, related club, so one of the students would go online and simply do a workout and for other students to kind of connect. And uh, but again, reaching out to this community uh, part would need, I, I guess, lots of brainstorming from everyone um, and if any more ideas. But uh, but I've been talking with the clubs and uh, on campus. They're no, no more on campus. So they're taking their activities kind of online uh, for their own followers as entities. So if I'm, a, if I'm like the club of health, uh, so I'm doing these um, activities online for, for my followers. And uh, uh, the, the university website or uh, social media outlets are planning to kind of showcase these activities, uh, these pages. So it's kind of the same thing, but kind of online. Uh, but again, I think we will all benefit from everyone's ideas on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, India. And indeed, health is probably the global concern right now. So I'm sure um, you have received quite a lot of queries about this, and uh, we really appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. Um, can I start? Yes, please. OK, I'm Dr. Popi Konidari from Greece, from the Energy Policy and Development Center. We are uh, working on the SDG 7 about uh, clean and affordable energy for everyone. Um, we haven't received from any other hub any emails, so I'm surprised that uh, Mrs. Machumi said that probably she sent to us because we were also looking to cooperate with other hubs. That's just to clarify the fact that we are open to cooperating with the other hubs and we have no problems. So if anyone would like to contact us, we're free for that. Now, as for activities that we have started about the seventh, uh, the five anniversary of the UN, probably you know that we started to see if we could uh, do this campaign for planting trees as an initiative to show uh, that um, 
uh, trees are part uh, or let's say uh, there were a, a large number lost by the fire. So by replacing or planting trees, that would be an initiative showing that we are caring about the planet. But due to this situation, this crisis that we are all uh, facing now, all of these are stepped back because the priorities are others now, and not only for Greece, but for everyone. So we do not know if this initiative will go on and how. And we also had this um, uh, contest uh, for students in high schools and universities about energy efficiency so that they could turn their uh, buildings uh, into more energy efficient ones and having energy savings. But again, due to all this, we have lost any contact. And the other problem that we face is that although we have uh, all these tools about distant communication, we do not have proper uh, tools uh, to work with. I mean, that I'm one week now without the computer, I cannot communicate easily. Professor Mavrakis has also some difficulties and we cannot go at the office since we are all trying to stay at home. So we are trying now to replan oral initiatives. So any feedbacks from you will help us. But one thing that we have in mind is the after all this crisis era and what will come. So we're thinking about energy efficiency for energy poor and not only that, but for everybody. So maybe we'll try and promote an initiative about this, how to make more energy savings since we will all face several problems after all this is confronted. So this is so far what I can say. Thank you Thank very you much this. indeed. Thank you, doctor, for your for your participation. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Hello. I'm Stefano uh, Batilossi from Carlos III Madrid. Uh, we were uh, lucky enough uh, we, because we were uh, uh, holding a, um, um, a uh, perhaps you can see it on the on the screen a, 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 a United Nations model event uh, from the 2nd to the 6th of March uh, in our university. So this is a big conference uh, and actually the main topic of the event was uh, uh, SDG 16, Peace, Justice and Strong uh, Institutions. So this was very, uh, 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 very good uh, uh, event that uh, hundreds of students participated and it was just 10 days before the campus was closed officially and since then, we have been safely uh, secluded, um, working from home. We had a very smooth transition from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to uh, online teaching. Uh, we are using a platform which is, has been uh, scaled up to accommodate uh, a huge volume of uh, online teaching. And so for the moment, we are just kind of keeping track of the old, old teaching activities. Uh, uh, from home and students seems to be quite uh, quite happy with that. We don't know how long uh, this situation is going to to last. Uh, uh, the The forecast is that we will not resume face to face activities uh, for the rest of the uh, of the teaching term. Perhaps uh, uh, from the second uh, half of May or early June we will go back to a more uh, uh, normal activity, and so we plan to to to, to move uh, uh, well into the, into summer. The remaining activity, which had to be carried out uh, uh, on campus, such as uh, thesis defenses and uh, and so and so on. Um, as far as the other activities we plan to organize, uh, most of them uh, were for the fall. So we hope we will be able to uh, uh, stick to the to the schedule, and we will be very happy to uh, link these activities uh, uh, to the uh, to the UN anniversary and the UNI University. And so, uh, Omar, please uh, uh, keep us informed about uh, what kind of uh, um, 
synergies we can develop in order to, 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 to advertise properly this, uh, this coincidence. Sure thing. Uh, bueno, muchas gracias. Thank you very much indeed, Stefano, for, for your participation. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, Mark. Hi, and everyone. Uh, I'm Mark Charlton from De Montfort University in the United Kingdom. Um, it's been really interesting to hear everyone. Uh, um, I just want to say we're, we are really keen to collaborate with all the other hubs. We've been keeping up with what you've been doing um, via the weekly updates, and, and, and we're really proud to represent SDG 16, but we're also proud to be part of a community of 16 other SDGs, and we'd be really keen to collaborate on ideas. We uh, don't want to go too deeply into our um, online teaching structures because I think there's lots of similarity between all universities right now on that. But I was uh, just wondering in terms of a student engagement, whether this presents an opportunity for us to reach out in a, a different kind of different kind of way beyond our online teaching and, and, and other communications about uh, COVID-19, perhaps to uh, set a competition or, or uh, something where students make some media around uh, uh, their thoughts on uh, maybe the 75 years of the United Nations and what the next 25 years may bring to take us to 100, say, or uh, something about at each of our university's individual uh, SDGs. And then perhaps at the end of it, we could uh, gather it all together and make some sort of publication online to share with everyone about what we're doing. Um, it has been on my portfolio, not that I've got to it yet, and perhaps with coronavirus, I might not get to it this year, but I was asked to uh, try and reach out to all the hubs to call for some papers around the um, work that, that um, academic work that's been undertaken around um, sustainable development goals. So um, maybe this is an opportunity that could be taken off my plate and delivered more centrally. But I'm happy to lead it as part of my work, but perhaps you and I, you and AI might want to own it and and do it. But I'd be really happy to support that idea. And and, and as as we go down the line, I will, uh, and the world perhaps seems a, a, a little more steady than it does right now in, in terms of how we're all working and coping, that uh, something that I, I might well introduce uh, down the line anyway, but if the UNAI or, or the universities were interested, I'd be really supportive of that idea and happy to take it forward with uh, UNAI or, or, or um, other colleagues that are online. So yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mark, for your participation and really to the people at DMU. Is there anyone else from the hubs that have not spoken so far that would like to speak? Hi, Cheryl Hendricks from the University of Pretoria. Can I come in? Sure. Thank you. Yes. Um, we're, we're all in the same boat, of course. Um, we're struggling with how we convert our classrooms into online learning. But one of the things I was wondering is if you could take some strain off us, because at the moment, academics aren't responding to requests to send research information out. Um, and of course, mm. only thing that people read at the moment is COVID related um, work. Mm. So if you could take a strain off us at the moment and go with Mark's grand idea um, of enlisting stories from around the world of students' experiences at this time, I think that could be something really helpful. If we could link it to the different SDGs, um, we, we are um, responsible for SDG 2, of course, which has to deal with the whole issue of feeding the world. Um, but that would be really great if, if you were able to use your capacity to step in at least for a couple of weeks and keep things moving. Thank you. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, it's Lanise from UNAI. It's it's interesting that you and Mark should bring that up because we have been discussing um, doing so, a series on looking at this. So um, a multimedia series that would include video diaries, uh, maybe from students who talk about you know what this experience is like for them, but also from researchers who 
I'm sure there are researchers whose research has been interrupted. They can't do field work. They can't go to their labs. They can't gather, you know, the data that they were out gathering because now this has all been disrupted. So what does this mean for research? To talk to campus administrators, what has this been like to so quickly have to pivot uh, to, you know, this sort of distance learning, virtual learning. Uh, what does it mean when you don't have all of the tools? Uh, one of the things that has become very stark here uh, in New York and the U.S. has been sort of this digital divide as well between communities who had the tools to quickly pivot to an online uh, learning type module and those that didn't, whether they had access to broadband internet, whether they had laptops and computers they could use. So I think that COVID is also a great time to look at um, you know, some of these inequalities and how that impacts education. So we would also love to get feedback on you on some of those issues because we're looking at doing a series on the impact of coronavirus on, on education from students to administrators, to research, to, you know, what does this mean for the research community and the slowdown and the progress they were making on all the research that they were doing. So we think that this is really going to have these long-term uh, impacts, but we also wanna hear um, from people, I think Mark mentioned uh, that there could be some silver linings here. There could be, you know, what lessons can we take out of this? Uh, it's been a very difficult time. It's been, it's an incredibly uh, horrible situation, uh, but are there lessons that we can take away, different ways of learning, of of interacting, of engaging, that we can take forward when we move, you know, eventually past this and things get back to normal? Uh, but what will be the new normal after COVID is over? Indeed. Thank you very much, Lanise, uh, for your inputs. And uh, if there's any other STD hub that would like to speak, uh, you can do so. I believe there's uh, a couple of hubs that have those spoken so far. So if you would like to speak, please. Um, Seeing not, um, uh, I, I hand it over to, to Ramul for for his thoughts about uh, what we have heard so far from the hubs. Oh, thank you so much, Omar, and thanks um, all of you. I'm you know particularly grateful for friends like Amy. I, I I really don't know the actual time difference, but I imagine it's fairly phenomenal. And our our friends from Japan, thank you for joining us at this hour. As I said, one of the logistical details we'll follow up with you is what time these uh, con uh, conversations should be in the future. We will be sending out a, a brief note with the points that have been raised, all of which have been immensely useful. We have a couple of very specific ideas, uh, including the ones that um, that Mark um, from De Montfort and Sheila from Pretoria mentioned, which, um, as Lenny said, we are going to be taking up further. I also wanted to draw your attention to the possibility of the hubs jointly supporting the appeal by Secretary General Guterres for a global ceasefire. I realize that um, in the present circumstances, it's not always easy for a university to go through the processes of endorsing such a call because it requires various levels of approval. If it is possible, and I was very grateful to get a message just this morning from the University of Bergen saying that um, they had supported it. So we will be in touch with you if it's something which is feasible. By all means, do so. But we fully understand, particularly at this time, if there are procedural or other constraints involved. I think, as, uh, as all of you mentioned, there have been two fairly dramatic shifts that um, we did not envisage when we planned the series. The first is the, the notion, if you will, of absent learning or or virtually present but physically absent learning, the transition onto online courses and the limitations that has, as Lenise just mentioned. And the second at the, at the intellectual level, if I may, is the preoccupation of everyone with the crisis that we now have, so that research in other areas is in a sense being crowded out or doesn't get the attention it deserves. And that again is 
compelling for us to reflect because of two reasons. One is that research is going to be eventually essential to the hopefully post-COVID world, and we can't let it wither. So how do we manage to reconcile these two? So in a sense, I think our way forward is going to be really those three great reconciliations, the one between physical teaching and virtual learning, the one between sustainable development of the long term and the pandemic as an emergency now in real human terms, and the third at the research level, how do we ensure that the present does not completely obscure the long term? So these are the thoughts, and I'm extremely grateful, and to our wonderful team. Um, I'm, I don't think we've had a chance to, to meet all of them, which is not always possible, but I did want to, in addition to Linis and Omar, want to thank uh, Bo and Brenda and Dari and Satya, who have joined us and are sitting in the background and who will join in sending you the summary. Back to you, Omar. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Ramo. Uh, before we wrap up, is there any other hub who would like to, either if you spoke already or those who have not spoken yet so far, uh, if you would like to, to add something to what you just said, uh, please do so. Uh, hi again, uh, it's Inji from Cairo, uh, New Giza University. Um, yes, we've already actually uh, started. The, we 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 support the uh, the call uh, sent for uh, ceasefire, and we've already posted um, on Sunday uh, something about it on our social media outlets. Uh, and uh, as and I'm very excited with the ideas uh, that have been also shared. And I think if we try to creatively think of something online uh, related to what everyone's uh, going through uh, now, um, we would love to, uh, you know, support as much as we can uh, in this and work together, all of us. I'm, I'm really looking forward, and it's very nice to see everyone's faces, especially you, Omar. We <laughs> we talked a lot, but never really got to uh, to see each other. So I'm very yeah. excited and uh, hopefully optimistic that this would uh, be a, a, a great learning for everyone and make it, makes us all resilient to uh, what we're going through. Thank you. Thank you very much, India. I, I just want to make a note that Bush from um, Butims in Pakistan had wanted to make an intervention. So I'm just going to see if I can um, find her and unmute her in the discussion. She couldn't... Um, uh, hold on just a second. Uh, Bushra, I don't have you on mute. Um, can you click your little microphone? I mean, it's showing that you're on mute, but I can't unmute you from my end uh, because I know you wanted to make an intervention, but you couldn't. Um, oh, there you are. are you unmute? I think you're unmuted now. Bushra, are you there? Okay. Um, she did post something in the chat. I can't hear, but she's very much interested in sharing um, information on how virtual learning is going for everyone. So maybe that's something that we can coordinate um, if virtual, you know, how virtual learning your experience is. So maybe in a few months um, or even just a very short uh, survey in the next couple of weeks so that maybe we can share feedback and best practices of things that uh, are working for folks. Um, I know, Suha, you posted in the chat that it would be great to get a list of contacts, um, and I posted a little higher up in the chat. After this meeting, uh, we're going to send out meeting notes, plus a very short uh, toolkit for the SDG hubs, which will include all of the contact information for all the hubs. So uh, we will also try to set up um, maybe a Gmail listserv so that you all can just email each other on the listserv if you want to email everyone. Uh, and we can also set up a Facebook group uh, if you all are interested. I, you know, I know that it's um, hit or miss people who use the platform regularly, but if that's of interest to you all, we can also set up a Facebook group so that you can post things and share things with each other. Uh, we will also send out a recording of this meeting for people who were not able to make it or people who wanted to go back and take a listen uh, so that you have that for your reference. So definitely keep a lookout uh, from Omar for an email with all of these things uh, after the meeting. 
Thank you, Lanis. And I will hand it over briefly to 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 Ramu. Uh, we are receiving a question through the chat about what kind of procedure should we follow to endorse uh, the UN call for the global ceasefire. So if oh, uh, thank you so much, Roma. No, I think if you could just let us know that the the name of the institution, because I know that a number of us are universities, while some of us, as as uh, uh, our friend Dr. Popi is from a particular institute within a university. So who exactly is endorsing it? Let us know that. And we will put all these together and we shall let the Office of the Secretary General know that this expression of support has come. We've been doing this with the, the key constituencies with which the United Nations is involved. Uh, to give you one instance, we have 17 individuals, just as we have 17 hubs, who are United Nations messengers of peace. Uh, these, these are people prominent in the world of entertainment or literature or music. And they have also collectively issued a statement endorsing this appeal for a global ceasefire. In the course of, uh, ideally in the course of um, this week or whenever you do decide that, and then we'll put them together. As I mentioned, we've already got a couple of emails from institutions. So thank you very much for that support. And I'll and I'll just add. Um, I think NJ uh, mentioned uh, that they um, New Giza had shared it on social media, and in the toolkit you'll have all of our social media handles. So if you want to tag us um, when you share things on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, uh, we can also reshare, we can like, we can repost. Uh, but we really want to show that the academic community, um, because of the impact that violence and conflict has on students and on learning. Uh, we do want to show that the academic community is engaged on this. And while it may not seem um, immediately evident why, you know, universities would support the ceasefire, obviously they are not armed combatants, uh, but this idea that this disrupts learning, it disrupts students in their lives um, and hinders progress, we really want to see uh, the support of universities on that message. Is there is there any other uh, SDG hub that would like to, to take the floor? Seem not. I will give I will hand it over to Ramu for his final remarks and to wrap up uh, the webinar. No, thanks so much. In fact, I was I was a little uh, uncertain whether an hour was going to be enough because I thought we might have to have much longer than this. But I'm very grateful, extremely succinct, and that's um, wonderful for first encounter or conversation. Uh, we also look forward to you. We'll follow up, as Lenny said, both with a recording and minutes and future action plans, and also your ideas for how to keep the conversation going and what we should focus on. I also take note of the fact mentioned by uh, Dr. Konidari that sometimes when we send communications to each other, these might either not reach or be missed. So uh, we need to think of a way, by all means, if you want us to share something with the other hubs, please let us know and we will follow up and share it. And we are really looking forward to the best practices that uh, that Mark mentioned, which, which again, we can be, um, and we'd be most grateful, Mark, if you do take on the, the responsibility, if you will, of initiating that coordination, but we will be the platform which can share that further so we can be in direct touch on that. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, for many of you, a very well-deserved good night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anissa, if you want to add something. No, I am just so grateful for the the engagement and the participation and uh, and really it's uh, your activities that um, have made UNAI a really standout uh, program for the UN and a point of outreach. Uh, and I will say that to our colleagues, uh, Bo and Brenda and Dari and Talita, every single week that they do uh, the newsletter, we get emails, we get comments of people who are so incredibly impressed by the work the research the, that's happening um, at the hubs and at UNAI member schools. And our, um, 
our newsletter has a reach of, of 8,000 subscribers and very high engagement numbers. Uh, and so it really is going, you know, around the world and w throughout the UN system, the work that uh, you all are doing and the research for everything that you do uh, and the role that you're playing uh, in young people's lives and also uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals. Well, to wrap up, uh, once again, thank you very much to all, you, all of you for your participation and your engagement and the incredible and remarkable work you're doing on campus and beyond. Network and the fact that our SDG hubs it's it's really something and it's really meaningful for me in particular to finally meet you in person after uh, so many emails that we have uh, two years uh, or one year and a half so we really appreciate it. and on behalf of the UNI team I thank you very much all for your participation we look forward uh, to hearing more for you uh, we're going to have more webinars like this in the in near future and we're going to share after this meeting uh, in within the next few days uh, the toolkit that was mentioned by Monise and also uh, some comments about this uh, this very first webinar. I thank you very much and good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you and thank you very much. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Good night. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Thank you.